Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 19th of October 2021 and we're producing our Tuesday morning gold and silver price update forecast and daily news. This morning we can see gold and silver take a reasonable hike as dollar values fall and some geopolitical issues raise their head. So let's take a look. Welcome to Illuminati Silver. It's Tuesday the 19th of October 2021 at 0948am GMT plus one. The weather outside. Three adjectives today. Windy, gusty, blowy. Yes, and my word, how the wind may actually help the gas crisis. As we can see, European gas prices drop on windy and mild weather forecasts. European natural gas prices declined as mild and windy weather will provide some relief to the region's strained energy system. Warm temperatures at the start of the heating season will cushion the impact of lower supplies from Russia, while liquefied natural gas cargoes are also diverting to Asia. Wind turbines in both the UK and Germany are poised to produce more electricity than ever on Thursday. I can see it now. Windmills appearing everywhere. One of our commenters asked, does it always rain in the UK? Well, depending which part of the UK you're in, the answer is majority of times, yes. We're waiting to see how they can convert rain drops into power and energy and we will be the energy center of the world. Starting from November, with each month that is warmer than normal, the global gas balances will ease marginally, helping to unwind a large portion of the recent rally in both gas and oil prices, according to JP Morgan Chase. Temperatures in Northwest Europe are forecast much above seasonal norms until Thursday, and will largely be above or near normal levels through the end of November. Well, if the climate change people are right, and we're entering a phase of global warming, we shouldn't be worrying about energy, should we? We should all be sunbathing now. Talking of sunbathing, Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, is lying in the sun on holiday quite recently, pontificating how the City of London is well placed to thrive post-Brexit. And this is what he says. Boris Johnson said the City of London will prosper outside the European Union, noting job losses and disruption to capital flows have been lower than feared. The UK Prime Minister said in an interview with Bloomberg Editor-in-Chief John Micklethwaite that banks moved far fewer roles to other European cities than they originally threatened. He expects Britain and the EU will work together to protect their intertwined financial markets despite ongoing rows over Northern Ireland and fishing rights that have complicated progress. It's profoundly in the interest of our partners to ensure that we do have good relations. We do continue to see proper flow of capital and services between London and all other parts of Europe. And I'm sure that that will continue, Johnson said. Good news. However, what's not good news for the average worker and this is something we've been talking about literally for years. One of the greatest threats to employment, not just in the UK, but throughout the world, is the concept of robotics and artificial intelligence. Whereas industrial or mechanical capital will replace the role of us human beings. And we're now going to see this in Tesco's supermarket. Announced today, Tesco tests its first cashierless supermarket in London. Tesco PLC is following Amazon.com and opening its first cashierless store, where customers can select their groceries and leave without scanning them or using the checkout. Britain's largest supermarket said the new concept called GetGo will be tested at a Tesco Express in London's High Holborn and follows a successful trial at a store in Welling Garden City where Tesco is based. 
GetGo's launch is the latest attempt by a grocer to experiment with checkout free stores amid shifts in shopping habits and a labour shortage in Britain. Seattle-based Amazon debuted, or debuted I should say, its first cashierless convenience store outside the US earlier this year in West London. GetGo uses technology that allows customers with the Tesco app to check into the store, pick up groceries and exit. As the shopper leaves, cameras and weight sensors calculate what they picked up and charges them accordingly through the app. According to Reuters today, China-Russia Navy ships jointly sail through Japan Strait. North Korea test fires submarine launched ballistic missile. Inflation does not phase Britain's young, but perhaps it should. Business news. Households to get £5,000 to replace gas boilers. The England and Wales grants aim to reduce carbon emissions, but will cover a maximum of 90,000 heat pumps. Now, we mentioned about Tesco opening its first checkout free store. Well, Asda are going to hire 15,000 workers ahead of Christmas, albeit temporary jobs. And the government hails 30,000 jobs from new investment. The Prime Minister will announce 18 new foreign investment deals in low-carbon sectors worth £9.7 billion. Looking at the US, of course, we saw the unfortunate demise of Colin Powell, General Colin Powell, due to COVID-related illness, and our tributes go to his family. Trudeau apologises to First Nation for holiday snub. When he skipped an event on the first Truth and Reconciliation Day. And believe it or not, according to this, Amazon's Jeff Bezos may have lied to Congress. Oh dear. Let's have a look what's happening to our economy. The dollar's actually down. It's down 0.3 points at 93.61. And obviously, as a result, we've seen gold and silver prices rise. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Energy prices still rising, not hugely, but still going up. Well ensconced in the mid-80 dollar levels a barrel. Equity markets yesterday mixed in the US. The Dow Jones was down 0.1%, but the S&P was up 0.3 and the Nasdaq up 0.8. Asia Pacific markets generally up between half and one and a half percent. And a mixed bag again in Europe and Middle East with the euro stocks up 0.17 but the FTSE down 0.03 and the DAX up 0.02 but the CAC down 0.03. Economic news. Now yesterday, quite interesting really, and this will have had some impact. Industrial production was down quite considerably and certainly against expectations. For September it was down 1.3%. Now this follows being down 0.1% in August and against a positive 0.2% ex against expectations. So we're down 1.5% against what the market was expecting. This again now throws another cog in the wheel as to whether the Fed will taper in November. It's bond buying program. So far, the data suggests that it will. Something like this could delay that process or reduce the level of bond buying envisaged. The National Association of Home Builders Index was up it's quite strongly. So this is where, we, again, we have differing economic data. Today we have building permits and housing starts, beige book tomorrow, but Thursday more important because, again, jobless claims, home sales and leading economic indicators. And then Friday, our flash manufacturing and services PMIs. So gold, really good performance yesterday. Well, we say yesterday, that's not strictly true. The performance really is today. And we wonder if it's to do with this in, to some degree. North Korea fires suspected submarine launched missile into waters off Japan. Now we're not gonna go into this, but it's interesting that we're finding the markets are responding, or certainly the gold market seems to have responded in very close time proximity to when that happened. Silver prices up 52 cents, a great gain at 23.82. 
again now targeting that $24 level. Bit of a surprise jump, to be fair. One would have expected maybe a mild increase, but with the dollar falling so heavily and potentially geopolitical issues occurring, then of course there's been a run to gold and silver. Cryptocurrency markets almost at 2.5 trillion, just marginally off at 2.48. Bitcoin still rising now above $62,000. What's going to happen today? It's all going to be geopolitical. Economically, not really an awful lot happening. We'll now have to wait and see the further direction of gold and silver and the value of the dollar. It's all staged, in our view now, in the political environment. Thank you for listening. Please give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, press the bell sign. Have a great day and we will start constructing our windmill. Well, we won't really. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.